We do welcome you in the Saviour's precious name. We do thank you for joining with us this morning. And we trust that God will richly bless you. Just want to mention uh, two things by way of announcement uh, today. And that is that uh, at four o'clock this afternoon, we have the first of our drive-in services. That's at four o'clock this afternoon uh, in the car park here at the church, uh, 68 Causeway End Road. And if you're able to come along, we would be tremendously encouraged. Uh, if you can invite others to come along with you for this, uh, it'll be a short uh, service. And uh, there will be a special speaker, Mr. Noel McClintock, uh, from Bangor uh, will be the guest speaker uh, so do please remember that uh, Pastor Noel McClintock uh, will be our guest speaker and Peter Mander uh, will be our singer uh, that uh, this afternoon so do please remember that that is uh, at uh, uh, four o'clock this afternoon then the second of those special drive-in services will be next Sunday uh, that will be again at four o'clock next Sunday, the 14th of March, at four o'clock here uh, in the grounds of the church. And Reverend Derek Maxwell will be the guest speaker next Sunday. And Nicholas and uh, Bacchus will be here, uh, God willing, to sing. So do please remember that. The other services are as the normal time, uh, so do please remember them as also. We'll put a note. Uh, on uh, with them at the end of the service uh, with the details of all of the services in the incoming week. Thank you again for joining with us. We trust that God will bless you and that you will be encouraged. If we can help you in any way, uh, we're here. Please get in contact with us. We'd be delighted uh, to help you. Thank you. <coughs> Oh. 
quiet place for a few moments in God's presence. Our loving Father, we do thank you this morning that we can come into your presence. Thou art the Almighty God, thou art the Everlasting Father. We thank you, Lord, that thou art the one who is from everlasting to everlasting. We thank you that thou art the creator of the heavens and the earth. Thou art full of majesty and power, and we bow before you to worship and to acknowledge thy wonderful name. We thank you, Lord, for your uh, salvation. We thank you that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. We thank you that this life is in his Son, and our Father, we bow before thee and acknowledge that you loved us and you gave yourself for us. We thank you, Lord, for the one who is willing to die in my place, that a soul so unworthy might live. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace and your goodness to us. For those, dear Father, who can look back to a moment in their lives when they were delivered from my uh, Father, the wrath to come and saved by the grace of God. We thank you for your keeping power. We thank you for your provision, Lord, you have given and given and given again. And we lift our hearts in grateful thanks to thee. We love you because you first loved us. And Lord, you've bestowed mercy upon us and given grace and Father, shown your loving kindness. And Lord, we can but praise your wonderful name. We thank you, Lord, for your hand upon, uh, Father, each one of the congregation. We thank you, Lord, that we can commit to, to you those who are in need of uh, your healing touch. We pray for Norman. We ask that you remember him. Remember Catherine, others, dear Father, who need you today. We thank you, Lord, for uh, the help given to those who are shut in and alone. We commend them to you today and pray that you'll bless for uh, Father uh, Doris and Maud and for Helen and others, dear Lord. We just commit to you. We thank you, Father, for your hand upon those who, uh, Father, are seeking to serve you. We pray that you'll bless them wherever your word is going forth today. Set your seal upon your word. Bless and encourage in all of our churches, we pray. We pray, Father, for those who are serving thee uh, further afield. We pray, Lord, that you'll bless, uh, Father, the Park family. We just commend Linda and Stephen to you and the boys. We commend them to your loving care. We pray for Derek and Carol. And, Lord, we ask that you'll encourage them in the ministry that you've called them to. We pray, Father, for those that we support uh, in Eastern Europe. And we ask, Lord, that each pastor will be encouraged and that you will bless. Remember James, we commit him to you, Lord, and pray that you'll bless. And Father, for those who are working, uh, Father, in the uh, National Health, Health Service and those who are seeking uh, to minister uh, during this COVID time, we thank you for the strength and the grace and the help and the protection that you've given. We thank you, Lord, for your hand upon us. And Lord, we do pray that you will uh, Father, continue to undertake. We pray that you'll have mercy upon us. And here in this land, dear Father, we might see a real turning to God. We might see the hearts and lives of men, my Father, being brought under deep conviction. And Lord, that you will reveal yourself. Lord, we just commit, uh, Father, uh, Lord, the services to thee today. Father, for the drive-in service this afternoon, we commend, Father, those who will take part and ask that you'll bless and that you'll draw precious souls to yourself. For those who are not saved, we commit to you and ask, Lord, that you'll reveal yourself to them. So, Lord, help us and be with us. Undertake for us, we pray, for we ask it in Jesus' name.
Our reading today is from the book of Genesis, Genesis 41, beginning to read at verse 46. Genesis 41 and verse 46. And Joseph was thirty years old when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout all the land of Egypt. And in the seven plenteous years the earth brought forth by handfuls. And he gathered up all the food of the seven years which were in the land of Egypt, and laid up the food in the cities, the food of the field which was around about every city, laid he up in the same. And Joseph gathered corn as the sand of the sea, very much, until he left numbering, for it was without number. And unto Joseph were born two sons before the years of famine came, which Asenath, the daughter of Potiphar, priest of On, bare unto him. And Joseph called the name of his firstborn Manasseh, for God, said he, hath made me forget all my toil and all my father's house. And the name of the second called he Ephraim, for God hath caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. And the seven years of plentiness that was, that was in the land of Egypt were ended, and the seven years of dearth began to come, according as Joseph had said. And the dearth was in all the lands, but in all the land of Egypt there was bread. And when all the land of Egypt was famished, the people cried unto Pharaoh for bread. And Pharaoh said unto all the Egyptians, Go unto Joseph, and what he saith to you, do. And the famine was over all the face of the earth, and Joseph opened up all the storehouses and sold unto the Egyptians. And the famine waxed sore in the land of Egypt. And all the countries came into Egypt to Joseph for to buy corn, because that the famine was sore in all the lands. Ending there, and we know that God will bless the reading of his infallible word. Can we bow, please, for a moment uh, before we turn to the word of God? Our gracious, loving Father, we do bow in thy presence and acknowledge that thou alone art God. We are unworthy, and yet, dear Father, we thank you for the precious blood. We thank you, Father, for the word of God. We thank you for the Holy Spirit and we pray that you will bless your word. We pray to your Father that you will anoint by your Spirit and we pray that you will glorify your Son, Jesus Christ, even as we turn to your word now, for we ask it in his name. Amen. Amen. We find that Joseph has been through full years in prison. And the cry two years before that had been that he, uh, the, the chief butler, would uh, remember him and speak to Pharaoh that he would get out of this place. Uh, he felt that he was uh, stolen away out of the land of uh, in the Hebrews uh, and that he had done nothing uh, that he should be put in this dungeon. And perhaps uh, day after day he had longed for uh, God to uh, bring deliverance uh, and yet uh, we find that in a moment of time uh, everything is about to change. I'm reminded of uh, the words of James in uh, chapter 4 of the, uh, James's epistle. Uh, he talks about men who plan without even taking consideration uh, what their life is or acknowledging God and he says for you know not what uh, shall be on the morrow none of us know uh, what uh, may be on the morrow and we find that while Joseph thought at one stage he thought that he was being, he had been sold uh, sold out and uh, he was uh, in this dungeon yet he recognized later on that God had sent him before to preserve life and to save lives by a great deliverance. Not only uh, God was going to deliver him, but God was going to use him uh, to bring deliverance into the lives of many. And God delights to step in, and perhaps you have found yourself in a situation where you feel imprisoned by your circumstances. Now you feel that you're in a situation and you think, can I ever get out of this? Can I ever get out of this predicament that I find myself in? Is there any hope for me in the future? 
And you can be like uh, a pilgrim in, in, in Doubting Castle with giant despair uh, coming uh, into your life. And you, you feel the darkness and the, the cold uh, prison walls that you find yourself in. Uh, perhaps uh, you find yourself uh, in uh, the, the uh, overwhelming uh, with with a sense of failure, or or maybe uh, you you feel that you're mastered uh, by some besetting sin that you just cannot get free. You want to be free. You want to live for God, and yet you find yourself in prison, and you ask yourself the question: Can I ever be free? Can I ever be delivered? Can, can there ever be a change? Can I really be saved? Can I really live for God? Uh, we recognize the change that took place in Joseph's life uh, is only a, a, a paint picture of the transformation that happens in the life of every man and woman who comes to a knowledge of sins forgiven and, and the joy of God's salvation. It's a wonderful thing that the psalmist could say, he lifted me up out of an horrible pit and out of the miry clay and set my feet upon a rock and established my goings and put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. There are many today who could testify. That is what God has done for me. The change that he has wrought in my life in a moment of time. The chains uh, fell off. My soul was free. I rose when forth to follow thee. What a victory. Uh, we find uh, Paul speaking about his own experience. Talking about the, the life that I now live. Uh, he had come to the place of surrender. I have been crucified. I am crucified with Christ. Uh, his identification with Christ. His surrender uh, for the sake of Christ. Uh, he has allowed self to be crucified. He has surrendered his life to God. But now he has been given a new life. An indwelling life. A life of, uh, that has been raised. And for uh, Paul writing uh, to the Ephesians. He says you hath he quickened. Uh, who were dead in trespasses and sin. In a hopeless situation. In a pitiful state, dead in trespasses and sin, without any hope, in any strength of your own. And yet, but God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, now, even when we were dead in sin and quicken us and has raised us up together to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Here is what God is doing in the life of Joseph. He's raising him up. Uh, he is uh, lifting him up out of the, uh, the dungeon, out of the darkness, out of the suffering, out of the, uh, the, 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 the filth and the stench uh, of the, the prison house and being brought in. We cannot begin to, to, to fathom what it must have been like for Joseph uh, to, to, to step into the royal courts in, uh, of Pharaoh. And all of the splendor and the fragrance of the flowers and the beauty and the majestic uh, beauty all around. The sights and the sounds that fill his heart and his mind as he stepped out uh, for the purposes of God. God can come to you in your situation and God can turn your darkness in today. God can come. Him who the Son sets free is free indeed. And so Joseph is brought out. God has been with him. And God has been with Joseph in those hard times. And God has brought Joseph out. God has brought him out and God brought him in. And dear friends, God wants to bring us into the fullness of his divine purposes for our lives. God wants to find us those people that he can use for his glory. And so we find that Joseph is brought out and his life has taken a tremendous change. Uh, he comes and he stands before the mighty Pharaoh and Pharaoh recognizes there is problems but he doesn't know what the problems are he, he's in darkness, he's in confusion and there is no one that can shed light upon the circumstances that he finds himself in and uh, Joseph uh, comes uh, and, and uh, he uh, speaks into the situation uh, and he reveals 
Uh, the, 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 the God is able to give to him answers to the problems of life. Uh, God is able to give to Joseph the, the answers to the dark mysteries and, and bring light into the darkness. Now here is a man and he has experienced God and a man who has experienced God can speak for God. He can bring the light of God from his own experience and life and speak into that situation and give direction in the crises of life. See these people didn't even realize there was a crisis. Now, all they knew that there was a dream that they couldn't understand. They couldn't see uh, what, what God was going to do. And yet Joseph was able to reveal uh, himself. Uh, he was revealed through the wisdom of God, uh, the, the, uh, the, the need of the hour. And Joseph came and, and he gave directions. And uh, we find that uh, the kind of leader that is needed, uh, Joseph said unto Pharaoh, this do, let him appoint officers over the land. Uh, here's uh, Joseph and uh, he is uh, telling Pharaoh what to do. Uh, uh, Pharaoh is not uh, the, the man, uh, he doesn't have the qualifications uh, to, to, to deal with the, the life's problems and difficulties. And he recognizes, uh, uh, can we find such a one, a man in whom the Spirit of God is? See, dear friend, that is the need uh, of the hour. A man uh, who, who can show God's way. Uh, God, a man who can reveal and understand uh, the ways of God and what God is saying. And Joseph uh, lays it down. Uh, he says that, that it needs to be a man of discernment and a wise man. And so we find... And these uh, uh, verses uh, tells us about Joseph. Uh, he says, look, uh, look out a man wise. Uh, and uh, we notice what it says in these verses. It says, uh, behold, uh, this is what God is about to do and show unto Pharaoh. Behold, there cometh seven years of great plenty throughout the land. And there shall be after, rise after them seven years of famine. Uh, and he uh, told about how the, the, the plenty would be devoured by it. He says, now therefore, Pharaoh, look out uh, a man discreet and wise and set him over uh, the land of Egypt. This is an amazing thing. Now, he, here is Joseph saying, uh, you're not the wise man. You need to find a wise man. Uh, the word wise, uh, uh, the, the, the wisdom of God, the spirit of God and discern uh, or, or discreet though someone who has discernment someone who can perceive someone who can understand and so joseph uh, says you need to find uh, this man uh, and he says uh, uh, that, that uh, point a man over the land and, and uh, he says gather the food uh, he has a, a, a clear uh, prospect vision for the future uh, an answer to the need of the problems of the, of the day and he has a strategy to achieve the objective and he has the humility to recognize that God alone can give wisdom and so Joseph said unto Pharaoh the dream uh, of Pharaoh is one God has showed Pharaoh what he is about to do uh, and Pharaoh said unto Joseph for as much as God has showed thee all this and there is none so discreet and as wise as thou art. Uh, thou shalt be over my house. And uh, according to thy word shall all my people be ruled. Uh, only in the throne shall I be greater than thou. Uh, and, and he took off the ring uh, from his hand and put it on the Joseph's hand. And arrayed him in vestures of fine linen. And put a chain of gold upon his neck. Uh, and made him ride in the second chariot. Uh, and and uh, they cried before him, bow the knee, and made him uh, rule over all the land of Egypt. You see, dear friend, uh, there, is, there was a need, a need, a need uh, uh, to be, uh, for authority to be recognized. Authority to be recognized. And, and uh, certainly uh, it was good to have a plan. Uh, but there needed to be authority that is recognized. And so uh, we find uh, that Joseph 
uh, was given this authority. Uh, the, the ring uh, from Pharaoh. It wasn't another ring. It was the authority from Pharaoh that was given to Joseph. Uh, the, 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 uh, red and the fine linen. Uh, and a chain of gold. And a second chariot. And, and, and they were to bow the knee. The tragedy is that we're living in a day. Uh, when uh, the, the, there's a, a refusal to bow to the authority of the word of God. And that's the tragedy in our land today. And, and uh, in the circumstance and the situation that we find ourselves in, the word of God is ignored. And the word of God is, uh, direct, uh, is rejected. And the sad thing that the king of Egypt uh, could give command and expect to be obeyed. Uh, uh, that the people would bow to Joseph. And that Joseph's authority would be recognized. And people would listen and hearken and obey his word. And yet we find today the authority uh, that God has given in his word. And the, and the word that God has given is, 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 is not treated uh, with a reverence. And uh, there's uh, a, a take and unleave that attitude. A despising and ignoring the word of God. When God calls the church to prayer. What percentage of the people who profess to be Christian never darken the door of a place of prayer? Were never found seeking the face of God. When the church is called to pray, 60% perhaps of those who would attend church will never be found. The word of God does not hold authority in their lives. When God calls men to serve him, it's only the few uh, that will rise up and give themselves to serve God. When God commands to seek first the kingdom of God, uh, then uh, it's not taken seriously. You know, uh, many who even profess to be Christians, they have their own agenda, they have their own priorities. Uh, if, if they have time left over, they'll give some to God. Uh, but uh, the, to buy when God says be holy uh, and say well that's not really for me that's not my thing uh, and, and uh, the tragedy is that, that there's, uh, there's a lack of authority uh, that is acknowledged but uh, in the situation that Joseph found himself in uh, he recognized that what God was going to do uh, judgment was coming uh, and therefore there would need to be authority that is recognized uh, things were not to be treated lightly. And this was a serious matter. Uh, and there needed to be authority. And today we need to recognize God has revealed what he is about to do. We're living in the last of the last days. And the Lord says, uh, look up for the redemption called draweth nigh. It is time to seek the Lord uh, till he come and reign righteousness. And the scripture reminds us, the night cometh when no man can work. And yet we find that when it comes uh, to taking seriously uh, the, the, the fact that judgment is coming, and that souls are lost, family members are outside the kingdom, uh, they're, they're, there's a work to do. The mission field is crying out. Uh, and, and yet others are, are, are clamoring for their own ends and, and uh, uh, neglecting the call of God. Joseph recognized that there was an authority that needed to be acknowledged. You need to set a man with authority. And you need to give him that authority to do the work. Uh, we find that uh, and there was not just a plan. Uh, but there was a strategy to implement that plan. And while uh, it is a good thing to have plans. Uh, if plans are not implemented. Uh, if they're not carried out. Uh, if there's not a going through. Uh, it's one thing to uh, uh, have, have ideas and plans. Some people see problems. And, and they're very good at telling you all the problems. They don't have any answers. Uh, uh, others, they have big plans. But they're not willing to get involved. Uh, here is Joseph. And he says, this is, what's going to this is what God is going to do. God is showing you that, that judgment is coming. There will be plenty, but there will also be a, a tremendous famine. And you need to prepare for the future. You need to be busy uh, for, for the night comes whenever uh, the, there will be tremendous need. And so Joseph, uh, we find that he was uh, given this authority, taken in and, and uh, uh, dressed in all the splendor and given all of the privileges. 
the honours that were heaped upon him and the name that was given to him uh, that acknowledged and that he was the one who uh, was the revealer of secrets. Uh, uh, the, uh, the name that he was given uh, means uh, uh, one who reveals mysteries or the saviour of the world. I'm not sure exactly what it means. He was given a wife. These were, these were uh, things that were given in honour uh, of the man in whom the spirit of God was upon. And Joseph uh, he, had, he had been faithful to God. He had been faithful in the dark places. Whenever he was despised by his brethren. Uh, whenever he was sold into slavery. Whenever he was accused falsely. Whenever he was cast into prison. Whenever he was forgotten about. Uh, Joseph was faithful. And God uh, had found him faithful. Uh, but now uh, he was going to be trusted with power uh, and uh, with wealth. Some people, uh, and it's the ruin of their lives. Whenever they suddenly get into wealth, we find people uh, win the lottery. And, and, and my, they just their life crumbles to pieces. They, they lose all sense of value. And they throw money around themselves and they, uh, they make shipwreck of their lives. And here is Joseph. And, and, and we look at his life for a moment. And we find here is a man and he has wisdom, but he has his feet on the ground. We don't see any self-indulgence. We don't see him going out in his chariot and, 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 and living the life. You don't see him strutting around in his, in his fine regalia. You don't see him flashing his, his ring of authority. He, he doesn't seek to live in self-indulgence. We don't see him seeking to retaliate now that I've got this position. What about Potiphar? He, he, he wouldn't believe me after all the years that I served him and was faithful to him. I'll show him. Or what about that evil woman Potiphar's wife? Now she needs to spend a little while in prison, maybe a couple of years, and to teach her a lesson. Or what about that old uh, cupbearer uh, that, that, that forgot about me? I'll remind them of a few things. You don't see any of that in Joseph's life. And Joseph had a work to do, and he was out there doing the work. Uh, he was uh, a work to do. Uh, we say, find that he had a program uh, to take 20%. Uh, this wasn't an option. Uh, the, the, this, this was necessary. And this was uh, uh, the authority that Joseph had. Uh, take 20%. He was a tremendous businessman. That twenty percent that they lived on for seven years they would be sufficient to keep them and to, to not only feed them but to feed other nations. We find that he 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 had this program of of taking twenty percent and building these granaries. Now to store in the areas, not carting it away to some other area, but, but building them where the people were, the cities were, so that they would have food and, and uh, guarding and st the storing and, and maintaining uh, this program. Uh, this seven years was a, a long time, uh, and, and perhaps uh, for, for a few months. Uh, they would have gone along with it but then maybe there was the, the problem and, and, and the reality was Joseph recognised there's no point. he didn't make a suggestion he didn't send out writers and say listen uh, I, I want to make a wee suggestion I think everybody should maybe set some, some food aside uh, recognise if it was left to them it would never be done now, it needed the authority and it needed a strategy and it needed uh, someone to carry it through and so Joseph, uh, the question I ask is, how did he maintain this program for seven long years? You see the presidents in America, uh, or, or you see politicians in, in this land, and then they're, uh, they, they last for a little while, and, and then they lose their momentum, and they lose their influence. But here is Joseph. He kept reminding them of the word of God. Uh, you, you may have plenty now, but famine is coming. Uh, you might have, uh, you need to prepare because if you don't pair, prepare, you will perish. Uh, and, and so he saved grain. Uh, he, he was saving lives. And the message is still the same to us. 
to keep the momentum and, and to keep the hearts of men stirred and to follow through and with God, what God wants them to do. We need to remind them of the message that, that there's judgment coming. The night comes. We're, we're facing dark days. Uh, unprecedented times, unknown future. We need to be ready. You need to be storing the word of God in your heart. You need to be working while it's day. You need to be investing your time and your uh, talents for God. And because the, the night comes when we, we cannot work. And we need to press the message home. And we recognize Joseph, uh, he, rec he understood uh, that uh, there was a need for uh, uh, leadership, their need for authority. Uh, the, the people needed to recognize the authority uh, and acknowledge the authority. And they needed to carry through uh, with the plans that were laid at Hedown. And Joseph kept his focus upon God in all of the busyness and all of the things that he was involved in. He never lost sight. It tells us that uh, he was given two sons and uh, in the first couple of years of the, of the plenty, uh, he, he had two sons and he gave them Hebrew names. He didn't give them Egyptian names. He had been given an Egyptian name in acknowledgement and as, as a mark of honour uh, for the position that he was in. But he didn't give his sons uh, names uh, that were Egyptian names. He gave them Hebrew names, Manasseh. Uh, for God, uh, he said, for God. You see, he kept God always before his mind. And, and when we are serving God, we need to keep the Lord always. Uh, we need to keep our hearts uh, focused upon him. And he made uh, me to forget my toil and my father's house. God had uh, uh, so blessed him. Uh, that, that, that uh, he was able to forget in a measure uh, the, the, the troubles that he had been through. God had, had made him uh, forget. Uh, God had so blessed him. Uh, God had been with him. And then he had Ephraim. Uh, God hath caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. And God has blessed him even in those difficult places. And God, he acknowledged the blessing of God. Uh, jo uh, Joseph uh, maintain the, the priority uh, providing for the salvation of lives that was his mission Defend that is our mission today uh, we have only one life and it will soon be passed only what's done for Christ will last if we live for ourselves we live in vain if we live for Christ we'll live again and we find that Joseph uh, whenever the people, uh, after the seven years of plenty, uh, the famine began to, to really bite him. Uh, it says, and when he came unto uh, the land of Egypt, uh, the famine, uh, and the people cried unto Pharaoh for bread. Uh, Pharaoh said unto the Egyptians, go to Joseph. Uh, uh, what he saith to you do. Uh, we find that there's a day coming. And we recognize there's a day coming when, when there will be a cry. Uh, cry, And we need to be able to point them to the one who is the bread of life. We need to be able to uh, provide uh, bread for those who are th hungry. And so it says uh, that, that uh, Joseph opened uh, the storehouses. You find what a, tri a privilege that God has given to us. Open the prayer, the storehouses uh, and, and to give the hungry food. And Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth in me shall never thirst. There's not a soul, eh, no matter where you live, no matter where you, eh, you are, that when there are hungry souls, you can tell them where you find satisfaction. You can tell them of a G. You can open the storehouse. And he sold them bread. He sold them bread. Uh, you see, dear friend, he didn't just hand out. He didn't give them handouts. But he sold it. There's a price to be paid. And so the famine was throughout the land. And here we have Joseph. Uh, and the lessons that we can learn from this passage of scripture. There needs to be an authority that, uh, that is recognized. We need to get back to trembling before the word of God. God has provided his man. A man of wisdom. Uh, he sent him into this world as a saviour and as a deliverer. And, and we need to live under his authority. We need to serve him. We need to obey him. We need to follow through. We need to go through with God. And we need to uh, be what God wants us to be. So that souls that, are, that will perish 
might find bread and the hungry might be fed and the land might be spared and we might see the glory of God. May God help us. May God stir us in these days uh, to give a new obedience to God uh, and a new surrender of our lives, allowing God to take and use in whatever way he wants and for his eternal glory. May God bless his word. Thank you that you said, Thus saith the Lord. And Lord, we pray that we might seek you, that we might follow after you, that we might love you, that we might serve you. Not with a half heart, but, O oh, Father, we might give ourselves uh, to do the will of God, to serve our day and generation uh, according to the will of God, that your name might be glorified and souls might be saved and the land might be spared. For Jesus' sake.